uh, if I take an example of an ID and the entrance paper, the question comes, right? So sometimes they ask a question that, what are the similarity between Osama and Obama? Mm. Now think, okay. somebody can answer anything, but right. the answer is bo- they both are Muslims. Correct. Okay, so that is the one thing you know about. I mean, you might know, you might not know. So how well you can think about it? They will ask a question. Uh, I remember there was a question in the entrance. Uh, what is the average length, approx length of a pencil? Hmm. I mean, you have used pencil since childhood, but you never thought of like cap measuring it, right? And, or else uh, it, it's a test of how well you can uh, memorize, right? How many, I mean, can we approximately tell uh, what is the length of a pencil? There might be four options, 12 centimeter, 15 centimeter, 18 centimeter, 25 centimeter. It's totally up to you. <laughs> Siddharth, my first question to you is, you yes. spoke a lot about your profile, right? Yeah. You are a product designer at PTM. Hmm. Now, for our audience, I think they don't understand what a product designer is. Right. So, our audience today understands that we're going to talk about UI UX. Yeah. So, if you can relate your profile to what, how it relates to UI UX, maybe we can take it forward from there. Sure. So, first of all, I'll tell you what the product design field is. So, product design field generally talks about solving the real life problems. Okay. And that's start with a user because anything, any problem you want to solve, it's it's for somebody, right? Like suppose you wanted to uh, know the time. So you somebody design a watch because somebody wanted to know the time. That's why they design their watch. Earlier they had a very prevent, uh, primitive watch uh, with, with the sundial, right? With the, if you have seen sundial, how it is. So from there they inspired, they designed something mm-hmm. and then it came into, right? And now nowadays we all of us wearing watch. That that was a requirement that came into it, the real life. So any any problem, any requirement that is of somebody. So when they need something, in that case, what happens? You'd try to solve it via product design. What product design allows you to do? You need to understand what is a user has requirement. Hmm. Understand it, contextual, contextualize it, empathize with the user, what kind of requirement they have. And then what exactly you do? You try to create the solution out of it. Now a solution could be a tangible product or digital product. That's that's how it is the product design. So tangible could be means which you can see and touch like this microphone is a tangible product and digital product I'll talk about like see Jomato. You were hungry in the night, you wanted to eat something then somebody thought okay let's create a solution where a food can be delivered at, at your home and at that time Jomato came as a product as a solution where you can order food via that application and food is getting Delivered. I mean, you're getting yeah. delivered and coming to your home Correct. and you uh, and your whole requirement of like eating food at some time when you're hungry is getting solved which means your requirement get get solved by the product design field so that's how it is so i would simply say product design is a field where any requirement of the user gets solved by the uh, product designer they try to provide the solution for the users and that makes the entire uh, process i mean there's an entire process to do that and once that is delivered the solution is with the user and the users are happy with it so Simple. i had a question here so you work in the digital space right yeah i work in digital product design yeah now when you say you have to provide solution do you provide the end-to-end product like for example when you work, work at paytm do you provide the paytm app itself or like how how does it work so no. when you say you provide solution what do you exactly yeah. mean by that okay first of all any product company whether it is paytm Jomato. Um, phone pay or any any company is it's a one product that entire name name of a company is a it's a it's providing a solution right mm. so if i talk about any a company which is providing a solution for example swiggy is providing a solution so they are trying to uh, provide a solution in the f- food and um, i mean food and grocery sector right so they are trying to solve the requirement people so need. there will be a business model which they will come up with right yeah. now Let's say I'm the stakeholder. I want to open a product like Swiggy. Hmm. Now I come up with an idea that I want to deliver food to people, right? Yeah. Now where will you you where will a person like you come in 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 this design phase or in this product yeah. phase? Like, so if I'm a stakeholder, I told you that I want an app through which people can order food. Yeah. So how do you go forward from that? So for that, um, definitely now you you as a business owner, 
you found the requirement there is a need for the users to solve that so you decided to make a business model and once you made the business model then what you did you hired people from different different domain as a business owner maybe you can hire some business strategy people who define the business strategy then you have a product team who product teams have product manager and product designers which and the developers who do all these things and product managers define the requirement what kind of requirement will go because you won't do the entire thing at once sure like when yeah. the swiggy came so first they delivered the food then they later they got the grocery now you can see mini you can see uh, there are other um, verticals in swiggy itself right and now recently they even launched the uh, credit card also so see how their verticals is growing right which mm. means one by one they are introducing one more product right it's like a mvp minimum viable product so product manager define those mvp what we need to go one by one and then they come up with the requirement with a like in a com- form of prd prd means product requirement document they come with a document and along with that they do share why from what kind of product they are expecting how the how it will look like then you be, you as a designer or uh, what you go into it you understand the you requirement then you do some research you then you start do you do all the design process depending on your company so you already get requirements from the product team and then you translate those requirements into a working product so is that right what uh, a product designer does yes product product requirement uh, comes from the product manager then product designers translate those requirement to designs Great. and then once that is done that goes to the developer to develop it Got yeah, it. and once once the development is done, then product designers are supposed to do the uh, QA. It's called user testing. I mean, they do check whatever the design they have made. Is it actually look like that? Once they do that, so it's an iterative process. Whenever development st- starts, so what happens? Uh, product manager, sorry, product designers do get in touch with the development team and they see how it's happening. So before even getting it live. there is a beta if you, you you might have heard that some applications are in beta mode what is that it's a testing mode they want to see how the uh, application is working after a development so they do uh, uh, this kind of stuff and after that they make it public to everyone so that's how it works yeah got it so now talking more about the design phase because most of our audience here they want to understand what a ui ux person would actually do right so you are a product designer you told us you do everything right under the umbrella of ui ux now of course you're a senior senior guy so you will have people under you who'd be probably drilling down into the problem that you get right so if you can break down this problem that you get from the product team and how do you distribute that in your team who does what and how does it end up in a finished product which you will give it to a developer right who will go ahead and develop it maybe if you can shed some light on that uh, you know maybe right. our audience would be able to understand what the process right. is right so first of all try to understand ui ux is a part is a part of your product design process what, sure. what happens under the product design pro- product design when you're trying to solve a problem for any particular user's need you have to do research you have to do or understand the u- insights out of it hmm. and then uh, define the u- the user experience part where you define it through wireframe understanding those requirement you convert those into requirements into wireframe and then develop the high fidelity mockups which is like the final ui and then that goes into the development part so there is a process in that so ui ux when you say something like that so ux is a part where you are doing the structural part of it how it looks like and ui is something where you are trying to put the right color fonts segmentation how it looks like how beautiful it looks like and there are set of rules on which on on the basis people do define those uh, success i mean success metric that okay this this ui looks better this ux looks better and after those that they get into the development part so that's all connected so is this like you said ui is developed then ux is developed so is this done by different people or is it done by the same person totally depend on the size of the company totally okay. depend on the team members how hmm. it is hmm. so if you're working in a small company where the team members are like 10 to 12 and each person is having a role of like suppose you're working in startup hmm. and you have the you know the skills of research ux also ui also then you can do all together right. like in a in a set of time right hmm. suppose you have taken a one month time and you're doing in that right. and if you are working in a large company where the each there's a separate dedicated team hmm. there's a big design team and there are those i mean those people in the design team have a dedicated role hmm. somebody is doing the separate research who goes in the field figure out the what is the requirement for the user they come back with the insights and then later uh, ux person does a ux part they do the they define the structure 
they d- define the hierarchy task flows user flows user journey all those things they define it and then the, there is a ui team who's i mean ux person definitely provides a wireframe and then there is a ui team who have a separate design system available for the product mm. and they implement those on the on the, i mean they implement the ui on the those wireframes and that get that that is coming in the real picture right that's a real product okay yeah. so i think we spoke about a lot of things let's simplify it for the users who are hearing yeah. today right so you said the product management team will give us the requirement uh, you know which of what exactly they want in the product right now your job is to simplify that requirement and make it easy for the user to interact with that requirement if i'm not wrong let's say for example if we talk about a company like swiggy right if we if we look at it from a layman perspective it's just ordering food yeah right but when you try to break it down into the kind of things that they offer uh, you have a help and support section right there are payment section there are refund section then you are ordering food maybe you want to uh, you want to track where your food has come right so who all comes up with these ideas for example when when i order food from swiggy i see on the map that a guy is flying with my food right so there's some kind of a graphic over there so who comes up with that so when we talk about the design uh, industry or when we talk about the design jobs there are a lot of terms like product design human centered design right so if you can shed a light on what all these different terms are maybe there are more terms also which right. are used uh, when we talk about uh, you right. know ui ux work so if you can shed some light on what those are right. and then we can discuss more about it right to make it very clear right Uh, there are various domains in this i mean you might have heard product design ux design then i mean product designer ux designer human centered designer then also conversational ux designer then what all these terms are generally people do ask what, what these terms are and how they are being catered so first of all to make it very clear they are just a job title that you have seen might have linkedin on other platform but they are just domain role that you you may be known as by this, uh, this by this domain uh, domain role and what happens exactly there are companies who have the different kinds of um their uh, name i mean name of the designers in their team uh, i mean in company like suppose google call it ux designer apple call it human centered designer then um, many startups and other companies call them product designer so there these terms are there and even also the conversational ux designer something which people who uh, like siri alexa right you talk to them how they reply to you the people who works on that conversational ux part that they also call the conversational ux designer so there these terms are there but the whole thing is these are the terminologies defined by different different companies so you don't need to worry about it because tomorrow you suppose you're working in a product company and your company has given you the uh, offer letter of saying that you are a product designer but tomorrow you join somebody suppose uh, google right and google has says that you are ux designer then does the role of your role or your skill got replace or misplace no is the same you even become a more better designer at that time because you gain some experience but the point is it does not change your skills a, a designer is a simple you can understand it like a product design product design is a umbrella term you can take it a person who knows who knows the design process who can do research who can understand interpret the research insights and then he can uh, the person he or she can design the um, value out of it suppose uh, wireframes Uh, i mean mock ups wireframes and then the final ui which is the most important part uh, in the later part right i mean that's the pro- product phase so that entire process a person who can do that even the testing also comes because there are many companies who allows the user testing to be done and based on that they make the changes if something is not uh, so all these part of the they they are the part of the design process and uh, the people who follow all this de- design process they are simply a designer product designer you can call them and there's nothing like that these terms will make you some different something no it's the skill set that you know so suppose tomorrow you want to get a specialized something like you want to get a particular ui only and you want to be known as ui designer then you will be known as a user interface designer because you are not working on ux part in whichever team you will go suppose you go to small company or big company and you say that i am a user interface designer i do not i, I mean that's my specialization so that's your specialization of a skill hmm. but you remain a designer itself if you want to do the ux part research part tomorrow you can learn from any place and then you can add up those sc- skill in your uh, career set and then you can become a wholesale product designer 
so that's how it's uh, so so that that was a lot of information i think we learned a lot of good things uh, from what you just said one basic thing which i had which i am sure a lot of other people also on youtube would have is what is the basic difference between a person who does ui hmm. and a person who does ux right so uh, i think that's a good question so let me explain it in a very simple way so the basic difference that you uh, i mean the question that you ask ux and ui so i would say let's take a layman example if you go to a shopping mall you could see different counters you can different sections over there they are look like i mean aesthetically balanced and look like very decent right so the way how the aesthetic look like of that place you can count it, count it as a ui uh, how i mean just a layman reference i'm telling but if you go to the in detail right you will see that there is a segment right the food grocery sep- separate there is a separate for um clothes there is for different requirement different needs all those things are very different different so that classification that who has done that the way it is kept the the detailing right suppose if you go to uh, the dairy section so you would see that there are paneer or the milks are kept but they are being followed by a fee food first in first out so the one which has came like f- four days ago that will be first the and the pro- the milk which has came today that will be kept in the last of the shelf itself so that's how fee food structure so i mean the, how it works so the point is the way internal detailing of those things are there there is called the ux so that's a layman example of store part uh, store uh, any shopping shopping mart maybe reliance mart or anything or best, best price you can talk about but if i if to say the same thing into the design terms that would be like any thing which is looks like aesthetical part like ui i mean under the ui like font the the typography the color the spacing the balance those are the aesthetical part they are they comes under user interface and how the application navigate how you use how you go to setting how you order a food suppose you're talking about any food ordering application how you order a food how easily you can order food so that's the ux so that's how the you can categorize the ux part which talks about how you navigate your user to achieve something suppose since we talk as i mentioned that product design is a field where people are uh, i mean designers are solving the real life problem for the users who has the requirement so how a user is able to achieve that requirement is the ux part and how beautifully that digital product looks like to the user is called the ui part great so i think now we have a clarity what is basically ui and ux right now so in in the things that you were talking about so that uh, what i realized was there's a lot of creativity which goes goes in and there's a lot of business goals with, because of which i am bound right right yeah. so as a person who is creative and who's also bound by the business decisions which comes from the product team hmm. how do you take a balance like for example i personally have seen people who are very creative right but they want to get things done in their own way right right so how do you manage a person like that i'm sure because you also manage teams you would have also encountered people like that and how people who are watching this today on youtube if they aspire to be a ui ux professional how can they balance creativity and what the ta- the task basically which they right. have at hand right i think uh, that's a good question that you have so i would simply say this thing a designer is not a designer only they are advocate of i mean they have to do the advocacy Advo- they are that they are the advocate of the users and the business both so they need to understand the business requirement and they have to deliver the solution for the user such that when they are making a solution they need to understand that okay the business has said that we need to target or achieve this kind of goal in this particular time and parallelly you as a designer you also need to make sure that your user is able to do that i mean whatever the objective of the user or intent is there suppose any uh, maybe you can say ordering a food or ordering a uh, some something from some e-commerce platform that you want to that how easily a user can do that that's a whole both point you as a ux designer or the product designer do that i mean that's your whole job because you if every day whenever a requirement comes you have to make sure that both is happening and that's how you do the justice with your job so you need to make sure that okay these things are connected to each other and you need to make sure so whenever requirement comes and you have to deliver something you need to understand okay my business has said this thing for example if i say uh, i mean since you have asked this thing so there is simple thing suppose tomorrow you are working in a company and some requirement came now uh, let's say uh, there are so many things on the screen right and business said that we want to make this thing highlight for example 
uh swiggy recently i mean swiggy is a food delivery app but they recently started a providing hdfc credit card okay Bec- and i was really surprised okay now they are into fintech also very mm-hmm. nice so now they are pitching a f- food you can order food via swiggy card and you can get points something like that and i think uh, approximately year you can get 42000 of cash back if you use the entire thing and i think every tier 1 tier 2 cities people are using the swiggy zomato every time so why not to use this card so that kind of objective business have found that right so now they pitch that product so uh, for example the when swiggy launched this, their credit card so i was surprised to see that that now they are into the fintech solution also and now they are offering the credit card to order the food from their credit card and you may get some cash back up to 42000 per year but the whole thing is that when the business decided that they want to show that so when now the design is already there that is already live so when they wanted to pitch they could have shown a simple card or something in a corner that okay we are providing that they did that but they also did that i mean the what they did when you open the application you would see there's a bottom sheet and the the card is sliding in in an animation so that attracts the attention right you wanted your user to know that we have launched this swiggy hdfc credit card you can take that so business objective is that as much as card being taken up people do see that all those ctr has been counted over there so when you this kind of requirement came up then somebody in the design team have would have thought that okay let's put that this kind of thing and such that when you put that uh, people will be able to see that so the business objective now is matching with your design solution that you're providing so that's how you can use your creative creativeness to solve those kind of requirement in real life right so a business gave you the requirement or the product team gave you the requirement that we want to launch this hdfc card now how to make it attractive to the user hmm. was up to you that's what a ux or a ui is guys job is correct i think that's uh, i mean you kept it very uh, i mean you put it very well uh, business found this opportunity product defines the role okay we need to do this thing and the design as a designer you need to design the solution so when you have to design the solution as i mentioned you are the advocate for the user and the business both then you also you want to make sure that how easily you can inform your user to achieve that task so as a designer you, as a designer you need to look into this uh, the user journey map how a design is working what kind of uh, how a t- normal person would app, i mean open the application they will look into the flow flow means uh, the steps they will follow so when you think from that user perspective because as a designer uh, you need to empathize with empathize with your user and you want to make sure that the solution that you're providing that is matching the business requirement and also doing the justice to a user that with a very least friction i mean i would say the user friction word uh, with the very least user friction they can complete and achieve the that particular task so okay. that's how you can do that yeah understood sir so so that one more question that i had was uh, now let's say we talk about any business let's yeah. let's say let's talk about ptm or let's talk about any product based company they come up with new designs every month every right. 15 days right so what is the reason behind that is it because people get bored so you're creating new designs or is there a business logic to why we are actually doing it okay so any product company do these kind of changes are there i would i won't say that every 15 days because it take too much effort to do that hmm. sometimes it is a uh, year sometimes it's a month sometimes a weeks you never do that i mean you never you can just that right hmm. so i would categorize the answer into two part one they have they might have started a product or a feature already because they wanted to do that by being first in the market that's why they did that and that's i mean that's that could be like a mvp first the minimal minimum viable product for the first mvp they launched that product with a minimal uh, design such that the ob- main objective or the user intent is getting completed and later part i mean after some time they once that is get live people are able to do that uh, task maybe the design is not that great but they are able to do that task and achieve that thing okay and once that is happening parallelly in the team since the design is a iterative process you are your team is working on the more better design more better flow more better maybe some new feature you want to add some new steps you want to add that is happening so after the new in the new update they will be updating that same thing so you will be able to see that that's first part the i mean the first way of looking at it the second way of looking at it that they have maybe they have uh, i mean launched the product launched the feature like in a well full way puff, 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 i mean full perfection way 
but since it's a design is an iterative process and you may uh, iterate the design itself that like you got some feedback from the user you got some response out of that and that there are flags on the on the design itself which talks about how the the conversion metrics are happening then you might see okay whatever the design that we, that we have made uh, the user are i mean our users are using it and the report that you are getting you found okay this is the hero product that we wanted to keep at first but it is not working in this way maybe some other product is working in this way because you are i mean you can't like uh, you can think about how the user will use your application but there are certain user behavior that you or user behavior metric that you are not aware of so they might do some kind of stuff which you like okay this is something new so let's do some changes in that and launch relaunch it mm. so then you relaunch the product and again so that is there and that is the second approach and there was one more approach of that your company or the business thing that no this is not the thing that we want to do this is not uh, i mean this is whatever we have made it is definitely solving some problem and it is doing some justice to the user's requirement but we want to make it more better or something in that case you can redesign the entire thing and launch it so that's how it is there or it could be a brand identity revamp or it could be i mean just being fresh in the market so that can thing people do it so companies do often such things depending on their requirement and depending on their objective i would say not the requirement or objective yeah got it so now that we have understood in depth about you know how companies work how how the ui ux industry itself works now let's talk about i think most of the people are waiting for that let's talk about jobs okay. so if i am a guy who wants to get into the ui ux domain so first mm-hmm. of all how should i evaluate myself whether i am fit to get into ui ux let me put it in a perspective let's say for example i was very interested in coding in my childhood so i i knew i wanted to get into software and that's where i am today right so but ui ux is something that you don't teach in school you don't teach in colleges but let's say i get interested i think it's a creative field i think i'm very creative i'm maybe good at drawing or maybe i'm good at painting right so if i want to get into your is, is this thought process correct first of all that i'm good at designing i'm good at painting so maybe i should get into ui ux right because this is something which a layman actually thinks or how should i evaluate myself whether i am fit to get into ui ux or not okay so first of all i want to tell you that i know many people who are not from design field who are not from hmm. uh, who even don't know how to sketch they don't even know uh, good art or they are not a big good artist mm-hmm. but they are amazing designer they wow, have a good okay. thought process they are amazing in their work mm. i have been i mean been working with them and they are like really amazing the way they think uh, the, the way they think the way they see the world and they the way see the user requirement are very different that somebody did. i think the most important thing to get into this field is a common sense that is which everybody if i mean the people having it that's wonderful because if you have the common sense then you can think and if you can think then you can do the critical thinking also mm. so it totally depend on it sometimes we need to i mean Uh, embrace and do some extra efforts on us such that we can do the critical thinking but yes there are osmosis also happens when you start working with your team maybe in the starting you are at very early stage you are not i mean that great but slowly slowly due to the osmosis of your atmosphere you got to learn some more and more and due to that your uh, i would say your knowledge your intellect intellect gets improved and then you can do much better so that is something that that happens but if there is no hard hard stop rule that if you are if you know painting of your some uh, if you are good at drawing then you can come into this field but the point is the create being creative is one part of your skill that you had hmm. and from that if you can see that if you are someone who has some uh, problem solving skill means if you know like in in your home something happen and you and you did some jugad suppose water is getting leaked in the night and you did some jugad and it got uh, stopped which means you have some that kind of brain that that can you can do it something happened to in, in the refrigerator you did some jugad and that also happen so i would say it's start from the jugad in day to day life when you're in school you're something you can do that uh, and you know that okay you can do this thing because you have been doing this so long you and if you remember the diy that do it yourself there are so many concepts in real world what happens um if you are person who are de- 
who are able to do DIY a number of things, then you are someone who can use this use this skill. And I'm not saying DIY like you're seeing something on YouTube and then implementing it. It's like you by you thought by yourself and trying to create something. So that is one way to do that. Uh, capture that you have some inclination or else I would say you are someone who actually sees the problem behind the uh, I mean users problem right suppose you have a granny and you see your granny is facing problem or you you are in in your society you see somebody who who is unable to see something uh, if they're blind and what kind of problem they're facing and you can empathize with them and also um, to solve that and you you have the capacity or the tendency to solve that thing because the most important thing that you need to uh, have is, as a designer is empathy if you can empathize with a user that what kind of problem they're facing and you can solve that thing i think that's the starting itself so i wouldn't say that knowing the knowing the drawing or being at a good at painting is the way to the this field no this is there is no shortcut for that. It's an incremental process. You, it's a very organic process that you do. You might have to think on this part. If you are a person who have this kind of approach of critical thinking, who have critical thing, when I say the critical thing is not about sitting in a room and thinking for hours. I mean to say when you can see what is happening behind the scenario, right? If I can see something is happening, some problem is I can see in my surrounding and I can solve that problem. That is something is like a starting point of understanding that you have this kind of inclination and knowing the colors knowing the drawing and those things these are the skill set that anyone can learn if you don't know how to uh, paint you can learn how to paint in like if you practice every day right suppose mm -hmm. you practice for 100 days you will be tomorrow today you don't know how to paint right but you have we are like i remember one of my faculty one of the senior uh, faculty nayak says you guys are sitting on a golden treasure that's called internet so we actually are sitting on a golden treasure, right? One one search and we will see the videos and you can start learning the painting and in 100 days you will be able to learn painting. So which means you can learn anything, whatever you want. It's a skill set that you can earn, but it's not a hard, hard stop rule for this. But if, if you're in a school, if you want to go ahead in design field, so you might have to go to design college if you want to, but there are many people who doesn't go. So people who want to go to design college, they have to go for the design aptitude test where these kind of skills being tested, not me, I mean to say not to paint or something, but the, um, like how you can think, how well you can think about it. And it's also not about like, suppose uh, if I take an example of an ID and the entrance paper, the question comes, right? So sometimes they ask a question that, what are the similarity between Osama and Obama? Mm -hmm. Now think, okay. somebody can answer anything, but right. the answer is bo they both are Muslims. Correct. Okay, so that is the uh, one thing you know about, I mean, you might know, you might not know. So you, how well you can think about it, they will ask a question. Uh, I remember there was a question in the entrance. Uh, what is the average length, approx length of a pencil? Hmm. I mean, you have used pencil since childhood, but you never thought of like cap measuring it, right? And, or else uh, it, you, it's a test of how well you can uh, memorize, right? How many, I mean, can we approximately tell uh, what is the length of a pencil? There might be four options, 12 centimeter, 15 centimeter, 18 centimeter, 25 centimeter, it's totally up to you. So how are you gonna answer that thing? So that is like one, this is a kind of basic thing. And there are other also question like where you need to sketch those things. So if you like question like suppose, uh, if tap is getting leak, uh, tap is uh, leaking in your kitchen in the midnight, how do you stop that? Sketch those uh, three options to show that. Abhi now, what do you think? You need to sketch a full painting? No, you just have to show that this is the uh, tap is coming out of wall, what water is leaking and you're doing some jugar to do that. Now there are various ways to do that. Somebody can do it with a proper sketching. Somebody could do with a stick figure. Somebody could do with a uh, portion, I would say, like a peripheral view of the scenario. I mean, a kitchen itself. And the, there are many methods where a person can do that. So somewhere you, those skills can help you in getting some passing the design aptitude test or else there are people who are not in design field who are actually doing good in this field because they have those kind of understanding they had their own journey and if i talk about journey those people have been working like since 2012 when i didn't even know about what design is mm -hmm. so if i were to say these people have seen i mean those people have seen the journey which like from like one decade almost 
which is like from Photoshop to Figma, they have seen the entire con- transition, how the things has been moved in the t- last 10 years. They used to, if I ask them the story, they will be like telling so many things about making a screen that time and now how they do it. And also if you remember that time, UI, UX term, I think, I don't know whether it was famous or not, but I'm pretty sure it was a requirement at the time. But recently it got quite famous in the market. Everybody knows it. Every company wants it because with the right process, with the right UX, UI, UX process, companies are earning more and more. So if I am to summarize uh, the question that I asked, so you're saying anybody can get into UI, UX if they are good in critical thinking, if they have a design mindset. You also mentioned about a design aptitude test. Is that a requirement to become a UI, UX developer? Do, do companies actually ask for that? No, no, no. You're mixing it. Design aptitude, design aptitude test, DAT, is for getting into into a design college. Okay. NID, IIT, these kind of things. So I don't have to be from a design college to get into UI, UX, right? Uh, there is no hard stop rule. Hmm. Since right now, there are many companies who prefer to hire people from the especially who have the design degree sure. and there are many companies who don't even worry about that sure yeah i mean if you go to a new grower and say that i design well hmm. hire me hmm. he'll say show me how how well you can design it and you, right. if you prove him he'll say okay come to my team and work mm-hmm. so he'll be okay so there are many ceos i like that many companies are like that hmm. who don't even consider that so for our learners being just from design background you don't have to be from a design background to get into ui ux Okay. Point one, this is what we discussed. Yeah. Point two is, even if you are from a design background, chances of you getting into UI UX is more. Yeah, that is that is definitely because you have a career path, you have a definite degree to hmm. get into. Right. But uh, if you don't, if you're not from design field, hmm. but if you have a design mindset, hmm. if you can see things, if you hmm. can, as, as I mentioned, right, being a designer, the most important thing is empathy. Right. Okay. And I also mentioned that um, you need to have the common sense to see things right Hmm. if you are able to see things with your open eyes Hmm. and articulate those things right Hmm. then you can understand yeah these things are there so common sense is very important guys yeah definitely common sense yeah yeah, exactly you need to think you need to understand and if you actually get into this field Hmm. like even the college itself and you go and see Hmm. there are most of the things are common thing right suppose you got a block of 20 by 20 centimeter Hmm. of uh, pop Hmm. and you are somebody asked to make a uh, circle out of it. Hmm. How would you scrape it? How would you subtract the POP from the uh, that 20 by 20 cube? Hmm. Um, it's a total common sense. Are you going to break it? Are you going to make a circle and drill it? Or what, what are you going to do it? How, which kind of tool are you going to use this? All hmm. those things are very, uh, sub, I mean, subjective. Everything is available in market. Uh, I mean, in, re, nearby to us, right? And you can use anything to do that things but how you're gonna do that that's the, exactly the common sense how do you do that I think that's a, something which people can do that and achieve it yeah it's great fun. yeah second question which I want to ask is how much will I be able to earn because I think the people who are watching this obviously they are interested in UI UX that's why they're here but starting off how much they can expect like as a fresher if I start into UI UX how much I can expect also, uh, if I am an experienced professional, I'm coming from a lateral domain mm. and I want to get into UI UX, how much can I expect? I can answer it in two format. If you're mm. coming from a design background, there's a separate story. If you're coming from a non-design background, there's a separate story. Sure. I know one insp- inspirational figure, person mm. who was working in, I mean, on a petrol pump in 2013. Okay. And right now, he's a head of design in wow. one company. Okay. And and must be earning really good. I mean, really, really good. Okay. But that journey... How good is really good? I mean, how good is really good? It depends. Like, for example, what is the upper ceiling to which a, a person who is starting his journey in UI UX? So, I will tell you, uh, the according to the one report has been published by mm. the head of Jita, I think, Ramakrishnan. is a HOD. He, uh, last year, he published a... I mean, he conducted a survey where people have uh, replied. I mean, I think two or 300 people have replied on the um, survey Mm. and the figure has came up. So I think the people who have like 20 plus of experience and very senior people, Mm. they're running in cross actually. Oh, yeah. And and they they basically are working in UIUX. I mean, when actually every job end up, I mean, that's a side fact of the real real life reality, reality. That every job will end up into managing people, hmm. and uh, when you get on that at that level of head of design, 
you are supposed to lead a team hmm. entire design team you are the central chief design officer you need to uh, i mean you are answerable for any design mishap happen hmm. and no matter that the problem may, might be has been created by the intern or by the youngest person in the team but hmm. there's the credibility will come on you Got so it. that's a very big responsibility of somebody who is a chief uh, who is a head design over now let's talk about how much can i earn if i'm getting into ui ux what is the lowest that i have to start with so let's say i am a fresher and if i want to get into the ui ux domain how much can i earn also for the people who want to switch their career domain into ui ux how much can they expect when they switch their role okay so, so let's start with the freshers right so i can answer it in, in one format like one is um, their organization wise we have to categorize this thing because sure. there is a it is it's a subjective answer okay mm. it can't be one answer for all, for everyone so if i def- if i have to define this on the basis of organization so organization size i would say they could be small they could be medium they could be large mm. so small means with some startup where like 0 to 10 people are there or 15 people are, people are there and design team has only 3 4 members are there so depending on that you might get uh i mean depending on like the f- what kind of stage of the startup is hmm. how much they uh, they can afford to pay if you go to some startup where they able to pay you i mean they're starting maybe 15 20000 but there are some startup who will able to pay you good amount hmm. because they got funding and they have some amount like they can actually pay you uh, depending on your uh, job profile i mean also the experience second would be the medium size that like company which is established so they have since they established so they have a proper uh, i mean policies to for the payment depending on their band and the level that is to, totally different and there is a company comes a large company like google microsoft something like that so they have a standards industry parameter on which they will be able to pay you as a fresher you can expect from different total different total different i mean if you're coming from design field so you may start from 8 or 9 lakhs from the starting itself and if you're a person who are like coming from non design field it's subjective on how much and how how i mean first of all how great you are as a designer and if you are if you are getting a job itself it means you have qualified their parameter to become a design hmm. designer design team member of their team which means the payment could be start from 3 to 4 lakhs per annum so it totally subjective right is uh, and it also de- defined by the one more criteria of being in sector so if it is a pro- product company the payments are I mean, maybe could be high but if you're in service company which work where the clients comes and give the requirement and you deliver it it may be less also sure. so that's a two total different thing but i have seen people moving from service to product because pay is high a little bit so that's how uh, structure is and the lowest and highest that you asking so i would say lowest could be 15000 highest could be in crores i know i mean there's a report on internet you can search uh, it's a survey done by the head of jita i think ramakrishna uh, he ramakrishnan i think he has done the survey i think last to last year where the people from design field has replied on the survey uh, anonymously and replied i mean on the what kind of experience they have what kind of salary they have and according to that report the minimum people are earning like 2 to 3 lakhs per annum to 1.8 to crore wow. totally this is okay. a very different thing and even i know one person who has been working on petrol pump in 2013 hmm. and now that person is head of design so wow. that journey is very different so okay. i think the question the previous question that you ask about what kind of thing you need to have as a to become a ux designer i think zeal passion i mean hunger to do something and also if you are actually passionate about so- solving problem then i think the person who is like from petrol pump to head of design must be having all of those thing right otherwise his journey would be very different from like i come from i was privileged enough to go to a design college but he never been to but he has such amazing design knowledge the the way he tackles the design the way he ship the design the way he keeps the file itself everything is so i think it's all connected so pay wise i think you can find it on class tour pay scale six figure there are number of platform to find the numbers about it that's not a big thing i think the big thing is all about how great designer that i mean how great designer that you want to become because whenever you are applying to any company any company any recruiter want you to have one thing what the value that you are bringing to the team hmm if you are bringing good value to my team and if my budget allows i can pay you that's so simple got it 
right so i think what we have understood guys is that you don't have to be from a design background you don't have to have uh, good artistic skills to get into ui ux you need to have good critical thinking you need to have uh, common sense as i had told how much can you earn you can earn you can start you'll have to start off from a fresher salary that is 3.5 to 4 lakhs and it also depends on which company you are going into if you're going to product based companies right the pay will be higher if you're going to service based companies maybe the pay will be lower but as you progress in your journey and how well you do in your job right. the sky is the limit you can earn any amount right 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 and also you you asked me this thing uh if a person is switching a field right hmm. so suppose you are a person who is earning like 7 8 lakhs rupees in a company and as a manager you are there and you have some experience maybe 8 to 10 years of year, hmm. years of experience and now since you have heard this thing that there is a possibility of doing this thing so how would, how would you move to this thing or what what kind of number you can expect i don't think so if you are mo- i mean it's a very subjective if you are lucky enough you got a good company you prove you proven your skill set or your value to the company that you can bring a good value to the team and uh, uh, they are justified with you so maybe they can give you the amount greater than the, that amount that you earning but if you are just moving and you are very n- new at this field hmm. maybe you the first job you are going to get if they are going to pay you less than what you are even getting right now right so what you want to i mean do you need to look at the long picture or do you want to ro- run on the dopamine of salary getting how much salary you are getting or you actually passionate about solving problem hmm. and you know this thing today you might getting less than the amount that you are getting i mean a year ago hmm. but in the coming time you will be earning more because you you know the journey is organic hmm. you have to go through that process you have to learn things hmm. and you have to become that thing right i mean you have to become a better designer to uh, prove yourself that you can do you can solve problems right. you can empathize with user you can you have those skill set which is required to become a great designer hmm. right so that's a big question so got it great so i think uh, a lot of things uh, we have understood uh from sudat so that one more question i had and i'm sure a lot of people would have heard about it so since chat gpt came right there are a lot of tech professionals who feel threatened about their jobs right there's a tool called mid journey uh, i'm sure you would have heard about it yeah. right it creates awesome uh, graphics which which couldn't be created which we thought is a creative job and a computer could never do and now we can see computers doing that so what is your observation in the ui ux space how has chat gpt or tools like chat gpt impacted the role of a ui ux developer and is there a impact and if there is a impact like how how are people tackling through it so first of all i am pretty sure since the ai time has came up and people are using those thing even i use it so it's a nice tool to have that thing to know the those things how it hmm. works to create something for some references like that and even if, nowadays if you can listen the modi's song also so it's ai only right? right but whatever they can create but it's not like modi modi original right hmm. everyone knows it's fake hmm. so there is something which is not original and which is fake that that differentiation will be always there sure second thing the they what the, whatever the ai is creating they will be they are creating something which is the data point they have mm-hmm. but if you ask a illustrator to to do something and if you ask a person to i mean ai to do something they might do whatever the data point they have but a person who has a brain who is actual human has like things rolling in the mind and they're sketching they might create a wonder that might the ai can't do that okay. so the companies and the people these thing will be i mean those they will be they will be aware of this thing and they will be hiring people to do those things hmm. but people who are like they want to do cut costs they don't value design they don't value effort they just want to do those shortcuts to get the money on hmm. so they will be doing that but the people who are i mean the companies who actually gonna value that thing hmm. they will be actually i mean google was way ahead i mean of the ai they they must be having all those things but did they replace the designers or the creative directors no hmm. they actually they have it even till now and in, in the future also hmm. so there's something which uh ai can't replace which is the human effort human brain mm-hmm. that is still there mm-hmm. abhi wo baki hai and um, next thing is a question that you asked what is affecting in ui ux field so there are few i mean i sometimes people do ask me to review their portfolio so i do look at it i see i have seen the uh 
persona or something details are created by a chat gpt they, they mm-hmm. mention this thing in this they they written on over there hmm. persona being created by this if you have a, like doing some assignment you have less time like in a day or two day to finish those thing you don't have time to do interview you might can do that that's something is doable but in real life thing if you do that like keep doing that and you stop the doing the practice of creating persona empathy mapping all those things what will happen you will stop using your brain on those parts so mm-hmm. when you actually suppose you anyhow you land up in a job and you when you starting working and then you will have to do so those things you might need to think what to do where to go hmm. then you will be doing those mistakes in your company right so that is not something a company will afford it right got it so your impression won't be good hmm. so i think using those tools for helping that is fine taking hmm. references point hmm. but uh, depending on them that's not the right way so it's better to use your brain understand those things definitely take a reference hmm. l- learn from number of things hmm. but don't get dependent on them understood so one final question so what what is it that you would like to advise to people who want to get into the ui qx domain i mean i mean you can you obviously have your journey as an example you you probably can you know think about how you came into the ui ux space what were your learnings from there and what is your advice from those learnings to the people who want to get started in the ui ux space so what is your parting words for them i would say um I mean I was lucky and fortunate enough hmm. because my parents allowed me to do what I wanted to do hmm. I found there's a design field my inclination was in, in the research so um, I used to question I used to do numbers of science project and number hmm. of things in school so that gave me a like a hint okay I can do better in this field I can do the problem solving uh in the real life also in this field yeah. because uh ikki guy says that what you can offer to the world right so i i think that time i didn't knew about the ikki guy but now if i have to contemplate that yes if i can contribute to world in this way that's okay no problem in that second thing um what i can give advice so i think um if you are a passionate soul because i have seen people from non design field also doing really nice have an amazing thought process they have learned from osmosis they learned since they're working they're working since few years so that gave them a good exposure about work understanding which allowed them to do better and they actually can i mean what their thought processes has been now and i'm pretty sure what they were like in the starting itself that that might not be a good designer might not be a great thinking but you are human you are supposed to evolve whatever you t- today you are what mistake today you will be doing to after 5 years you might not be doing that so that's how the maturity works right mm-hmm. so even the design maturity comes to that there's something called dunning dunning kruger effect in ux mm-hmm. where uh, somebody can think that they they know everything that's a value i mean that's the highest peak of the stupidity where somebody think that they know everything but that's a stage where everybody goes into that's a process people go into and from there they start thinking okay there are people who knows better than me and then from there they come down and then there's a valley where they uh, disappear and they also think they start contemplating okay what i'm thinking is correct or not they start reading they slowly slowly with the time spending they start getting mature about the their thought process understanding and they become more smarter and smarter in work and that comes with a very humbleness also and totally depend how the person you are but yes i have seen more or most of the humble people are uh, doing that and they always say i have to learn a lot i have to learn and that's so true because that's how the journey is so i would suggest the people who are like thinking to this uh, field first of all don't think it's a money making field that it's a mining it's a mine that you want to come over there it's a very responsible job if you are in design sector if you are into digital design domain especially in ux or the product design you need to understand this thing that is a very responsible job for the world itself because you are contributing to the world you are trying to solve the people for the millions of people you are not here to take the salary for something because that is something which i mean you can think of okay i might get a job i mean i may get a good salary that's why let me move there but who knows you left your build up career i won't say um, i mean a suggestion for them would be don't think it's a money making field or money mine where you can go, come and just get the money no you have to prove it there is a process there is organic process and people have gone through a lot even every day good there are people who are like very good in design even they have to go through a lot there are many most of the time they are, sometimes they stop they feel comfortable they stop growing in the company itself so there is number of thing so i would say 
product design is a very responsible field it's like you are delivering to something to the world you need to understand that you need to focus on what you can deliver you need to understand your strength and weakness if you find your strength in critical problem solving understanding what is happening can think about it go through uh, the articles videos read about design process what all these thing you can read the book called the design of everyday things by don norman and there are number of books are there on design you can see i mean right now as in nayak to nayak says we are sitting on a golden treasure use that golden treasure okay search it on internet read blogs you will find number of books to read about it and depending on that your curiosity toward design will increase so i would say anybody like even me if my curiosity was there in in me so i think 0 to 10 or 20 for the process that i did 0 to 20% i did because that curiosity was there then somebody told me or the career counselor told me that okay there is a field called design then i jumped into that and i qualified and get into the field then 20 to 40% i did learned over there and 40 to 45 i start learning in job and then again keep growing so i i may not reach a 100 maybe i mean i but definitely i'm going to increase 45 to 46 it will keep growing that's how the time progress it is right so that would be there and uh, i would suggest the people who are thinking of this thing consider this is a very responsible job you are going to solve people for so you go you are going to solve problems for millions of people and making their life easier even it is a b2b sector or or b2c sector whatever sector it be it's a very responsible job so if you want to come into this field i mean make make sure that you are mentally prepared to do that because sometime if you are moving from a good career to this career thinking that one day you might earn like the person who used to work on the petrol pump like in crore so you might have to start from very less and you have to go through an organic journey where you have to prove yourself and it's a very demanding field very i mean jobs are less people are more and more and coming time there will be more designers will be coming up and your competition will be keep increasing so are you sure to be uh be the person who are very proactive reading knowing and in fact keeping yourself or considering a learner for all the time for the life like you're learning every day right so it's very thing suppose in 2016 or 14 there was photoshop or sketch or people used to work on that but now figma so people have learned from there right they have learned the figma and everything now they are pro in that tomorrow there may, may be new tool so there will be a development keep going on and you have to learn all those things so that process is there and you have to do do this thing so i would say it's a very organic process you have to trust yourself that you can do this thing and you will be able to create good solution out of it because you actually want to do the problem solving that's a domain itself if you are that kind of person and then the field is yours right so guys if you're passionate about designing if you're bash if you, if you're good at critical thinking if you're good if you think yourself as good at logical reasoning and of course like uh, siddharth said that if you really want to get into this field and want to work hard right then you can do anything in in the ui ux domain so coming to salary there is no upper limit to the salary there is but you will have to start small like everyone right and uh, mainly what you said is that the only prerequisite that is required for this job is you need to have the right mindset which is good problem solving ability yeah. right and you should be a problem solver right from from your childhood if you have solved a lot of problems and if you want to solve problems for everyone for millions of people yeah. like sadar does for ptm then ui ux is the domain for you All right, guys. I think we learned a lot about UI UX today. So thank you, Siddharth, so much for your time today. Right? Thank you. Uh, he, so just to give you guys background, he just came back from his office and he recorded this podcast. So thank you so much for your time, Siddharth. And uh, definitely, there are a lot of people who understood about UI UX today. And so, yeah. so guys, if you want to interact with people like Siddharth, right? We also do have a UI UX course that we have at Intelipart, where we have industry experts. who teach ui ux so you can join that course learn ui ux so thank you so much for your time sudat and thank you so much for watching this podcast guys yeah thank you